So let's take a step back and I'll show you how I got here. I needed some extra height to mount the pinion and the clutch for the Geneva gear. So I've cut two slots into the bottom support with a jeweler saw, hogged out the material with a box cutter knife, glued a clutch in place, and then used a rod as a central support which was also glued in place. And while that was all gluing up, I glued the pinion to the Geneva gear. And thus we have this, we have the clutch part at the bottom glued in, we have the axle glued in, I've got a spacer in there to hold everything straight, I've got this part here and this here holding this bearing in place because the Geneva drive has to be up higher, so that all sits in like that, it runs nice and smooth, this drops on top, so that drives round and moves everything around. On these I've glued the washers on the bottom and the top, so they're one complete unit. The clutch part has the spring in there, which is the one-way spring, which adds a bit of friction to the Geneva gear. So that when this turns around, nothing jams up, it keeps it, it gives it a bit of friction to stop the, the um, Geneva gear from misaligning. I've also made this crank arm. I've used the same collar that I used on one of the hands. And I've got the same pin there that I used for the idler gear, the intermediate gear. So now I have a crank arm that can be turned around by the servos. The servos will sit here and here, and I'll have crank linkages coming this way and this way. Next, I'll be cutting those linkages out. This is a piece of aluminium I saved from that printer I pulled apart a few episodes ago, so everything gets used, which is good. I've marked out these parts here which need to be cut out, and I'll go on this. Lunch break! Ah, here we go, the fruity fruits of our labour. Now this one, straight out of the jeweler saw. This one I've tied it up a bit with a file, taken the burrs off. I'm going to do the same to this one. And I'm going to clean both of them up with a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and a flat surface. giant granite slab cutting board which I've got to use as a surface plate so I've got an ultra flat surface for referencing things off of for measuring and for glue ups and things like that so I'm going to use it for sanding these polished it's not quite click spring but there we go, nicely polished. And now this is how this works. I have a servo down here moving up and down, one over here moving left and right. And these arms attached to these servos, like so, and move this round. So this will be the resting state like that, and then once a minute you'll go rip and do one sweep and then stop. Another minute goes by, one sweep and then stop. And they'll be held down by this thing. Remember that from this part? It's the other one of those. Finally I have made these. 
using the same aluminium I used for the spider which went in the great wheel. These will fit on top of the servos like that and the crank arms will attach to these points like this. Like this. Now let's show you how I got to this point. I started taking the mechanism off of my original base. I cut a strip off the end saw those into blocks which I've glued together and those will put to, to one side for now I also made this base and this will be the final base onto which things mount I have this finished birch veneer very nice and smooth it's gone the back in this might not be the final veneer but I've got it for now it's pretty cheap but I'll leave it off so I can do some work on this without damaging the veneer. space these up by the height that the servos will want to get the servos eventually and these go here and here so you've got this servo which drives this crank arm this servo will drive this one driven out of phase and it'll turn this crank arm around like this so that's a relaxed date and then once a minute they'll do that. Whee. I could play with that for hours, look at that. But I can't because I've got to edit this and get it uploaded so all you guys can see it. So I'm going to end it here and say tune in next week when I carry on and you find out what these markings are on these discs and see what I'll do next. Um, don't forget to subscribe so you keep up to date with what I'm doing and like this video and share it and I shall see you next Tuesday. Have a great week.